How's everyone doing? Welcome back to another episode breakdown of Attack on Titan Season 4 and in this week's episode, we see that Eren's supporters have become full-blown terrorists and a revolution is about to happen. I'll also be pointing out some of the differences between the anime and manga as well, so let's begin. This week's episode is titled Guides and it starts off with Armin talking to Annie again while also trying to connect with her sweet titan crystal. It's definitely weird that Armin has become so obsessed with Annie but if we look at the overall context, it makes a lot more sense. Because Armin had inherited the Colossal Titan from Berthold, it's likely that he also inherited some of his memories or feelings for Annie which caused him to be drawn to her. Before Armin could touch the crystal, Hitch caught him red-handed which made him visibly flustered trying to explain himself. Here we also learn that other than Armin, Hitch was the other person that always visited Annie and talked to her. Moving on, she hands Armin a newspaper that explains the current situation on Paradise Island and we see that Flotch plan has worked perfectly and more people have gathered to protest the imprisonment of Aaron. It also seemed like the military has not even released any statements about imprisoning Aaron, so I can see why the public does not trust them. However, I did notice that the newspaper only wrote about Aaron being imprisoned and has not even mentioned about the arrival of Zeke or the rumbling. Meaning that Yelena and Flosh did not leak any information about it, so their main purpose is definitely to cause anger and not fear among the public. Mikasa then arrives at the HQ to meet Armin because a couple episodes ago they did say they wanted to talk to Aaron so they can find out his true intentions and prove to the military that he has not betrayed them. Of course, they first need to get approval from Darius Zachary to meet with Aaron, but before they go and meet him, they notice some scout recruits at HQ which is something that rarely happens and we'll find out later why they were there. Afterwards, we cut to Yelena and Commander Pixus having a chat about her involvement in convincing Aaron to attack Mali which we did learn about briefly in the previous episode. Previously, Commander Pixus had pointed out that during a party 10 months ago, Yelena had asked for Flotch to be her guard and during the party, she left early and was escorted by him back to her house. But in this episode, she finally admitted that she did secretly meet with Aaron that night, although she claimed that it was to push the Paradise Island military to act before it was too late. It's clear that the military had no idea what to do 10 months ago and all the higher ups were just constantly arguing on what to do which was a waste of time. And Aaron probably had agreed to meet with Yelena because he also felt the urgency to attack Mali. Again, we still do not know about what they discussed but we know for a fact that Aaron started moving more independently after their meeting. Also, there was a minor visual mistake in the flashback because during this point in time, Aaron would not have gotten his present day hairstyle and even in the manga, his hairstyle should look like this but it's just a minor nitpick for me. Then we cut over to Hanji questioning Oyang Kompon but it's clear that he has no idea about Yelena's secret meeting with Aaron, meaning that not all the volunteers knew about her plan. He's essentially her right hand man and even he didn't know about it which does raise a lot of questions about her true intentions. We know that she absolutely hates Mali and would not bat an eye in killing any of them but somehow she's fighting for their rights and wishing for them to have jobs on the island. I personally think that Yelena's reasoning is to have spies working in different parts of society or they are setting up traps for the audience or the upcoming attack from Mali. Going back to Darius Zachary's office, Amin and Mikasa are trying to convince him to allow them to speak with Aaron but it was too late as he was already aware about Yelena's secret meeting with Aaron which completely ruined what little trust they had in him. And it doesn't help too when Aaron isn't answering any of their questions with Darius now believing that Aaron is now under the influence of Zeke Jaeger. Then we find out what the recruits from earlier were doing at HQ and they were just helping to deliver this torture chair which we saw back in season 3 when Darius used it to torture the nobles that he absolutely hated. However, the recruits were supporters of Aaron so they planted bombs inside the chair which killed Darius and 3 other military police members who were likely candidates to inherit the founding titan from Aaron. This was an obvious act of terrorism but in the eyes of Aaron's supporters, it was needed to be done because of two possible reasons. The first reason could be they wanted to send a message about the military trying to secretly have someone else inherit the founding titan. And the second is that if Darius was taken out, the military would be somewhat disorganized which could allow them to easily seize power. It was sad to see another character from season 1 to go but like Commander Pixar said, Darius would have wanted to live by a revolution and die by a revolution which is quite the poetic death. 
It's interesting how the people outside the military HQ were not even faced by the explosion and the sight of a torn up body, but instead they went full blown patriotic as they state it's the start of their revolution and Zeke was right, ignorance is a truly scary weapon. In an emergency meeting between the branches of military, they try to review the situation and Amin points out that the bomb was lightly planted by the new recruits which surprised everyone. Also at this point in time, I'll be referring to Aaron's supporters as Jaegerists because Commander Now had given them a name. And did anyone notice that most of the Jaegerists are new recruits? But it isn't surprising because they likely had experienced the trauma of losing their parents of loved ones during the Titan attack 4 years ago. So they are probably easier to influence into believing Aaron's plan to crush the world with the rumbling. As the military branches continue to discuss what they need to do, it's revealed that Aaron has escaped from his underground cell as we get this awesome scene of him walking towards his followers like a freaking messiah. However, I would like to point out that the anime did left out how Aaron escaped from his cell and in the manga he had actually used his new Warhammer Titan powers to dig through the wall and ground while he sealed off his escape route with Titan hardening so they couldn't chase after him. They also left out how the Jaegerist has more members hidden within the military and even the prison guards who had released them and told Aaron where to meet his followers were also part of the group. I'm pretty sure there are a lot more members hiding just waiting for Aaron to take over the island and now all that's left for their plan to succeed is to find Zeke and use the powers of the founding titan to unleash the rumbling across the world. I was wondering how they would animate this iconic scene of Aaron putting on his cloak but I was definitely not disappointed in how good it was. I did notice that the anime changed his facial expressions from a sort of uncaring look to show a more angry and determined expression which I prefer a lot more. Then the military members had another meeting and this time we see that Lady Kiyomi is here as well sandwiched in quite an awkward spot. We saw her arriving on Paradise Island in the previous episode hoping to witness the test of the partial rumbling but is now instead caught up in an argument between the military police and the survey call. Luckily Commander Pixels arrives to handle the tense situation but when asked what they should do, his plan is to just surrender to the Jaegerist which is quite true to his character. Because in the past, we saw how Commander Pixels has always fought for the side of humanity as stated by him and he always takes the most practical options that results in the least bloodshed. Of course he doesn't just want to blindly surrender to the Jaegerists but instead leverage their knowledge about Zeke's location and try to negotiate a peaceful way of doing things which is definitely the best choice they could make right now. He then requests Lady Kiyomi to return back to the port in case all hell break loose and before leaving she again offers Mikasa to follow them back to Hizuru if everything really does fall apart. Obviously Mikasa declines her offer and again we learn about how they don't really care about who is the ruling party on Paradise as long as the rumbling still happens and their investments on the island would not go to waste. Despite all that, Lady Kiyomi does admit that their clan had to become greedy snakes in order to survive and that she really does care about Mikasa regardless of what happens and wishes to protect her. Then we see Connie again questioning Mikasa whose side she's really on but Hanji stops their arguing and tells them about her hunch which might reveal Yelena's true intentions. She points out how some Malians have some odd workplaces like a restaurant as we pan over to see Sasha's family arriving at Nicolo's restaurant where he had invited them to previously. Falco and Gabby are present too because Kai had invited them to tag along and we'll get to see what will happen after they meet Nicolo in the next episode. The episode ends as the scouts ride off on their horses as we see none other than Pig sitting there in the background who has infiltrated the island and it means that the Malians had already made their move too but we currently do not know how many are present on the island. That's all for my Attack on Titan episode 12 breakdown and what do you think of the episode so far? I would really love to hear your thoughts on everything that has happened down below. Feel free to give the video a like because it does help a lot and remember to subscribe for more future content. Thanks for watching and as always, stay safe everyone.